Let me be glad in it. Oh, it's a blessing to gather together tonight on this New Year's Eve as we get ready to leave 2020 and leap over into 2021. I'm going to ask Deacon Missouri if he please lead, lead us in devotion. So y'all let him know y'all appreciate him as he comes. Amen. Scripture. Scripture will be coming from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. I should start reading at the 8th verse. Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Where there be tongue, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it should vanish away. But we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Mm -hmm. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now about us faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these, is charity. First, uh, I read First Corinthians, the thirteenth chapter, the eighth through the thirteenth verse. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of His Word and thought safely in our heart to sanctify our soul. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come. We come, dear Lord, thanking you. 
for your many, many blessings. Father, we thank you for this day, this night, Father. For you thank for this church. Thank for our pastor and his mate. Father, we just thank you for all the Mount Zion. We thank you for bringing us through, Father. You know you had blessings. You know to, this has been a, a real year that we hadn't seen or heard of before. Things happened this year that, but, but because of you, Father, we had you to lean on. We, we, know, we all know that our help come from the Lord. Look to the hills for which your help come. Father, we thank you now. And we pray that everyone on the sound of my voice, just, you know, so far, we, 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 just, we know that we come too far to turn around. Father, let's, let's keep on doing it. I thank you for the our pastor and his mate. I thank you for the trustees that worked so hard. Father, they, you know, we, 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 I just want to thank you for the faithful few. You know who you are. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you for Mount Zion at a church that sits on the hill, Father, and hoping that we will be the light for the world. We just pray that we just go on doing your word. And that, that you know, then thank you for the knowledge. You know, we know that you are God. You know, there's plenty of sinners that don't know that. They don't have what we have. We can call on you. We know that we can call on you. That's, that, that, that's precious. Father, we just pray that you just bless us now. Bless us one by one and then bless us all together. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, I come to fall to turn around. Lord, I come to fall to turn around. You know Satan's on my brain. He's trying to turn me back. Lord, I come to fall, to turn around. Lord, I come to fall, to turn around. Lord, I come to fall, to turn around. You know Satan's on my track. He's trying to turn me back. Lord, I come to fall, to turn around. Lord, I pray. Too long to turn around. Lord, I prayed too long to turn around. You know Satan's on my train. He's trying to turn me back. Lord, I prayed too long. To turn around, I come too far to turn around. You know, I'm on knowing for a fact that, you know, I, uh, it's Jesus. You know, to be able to be leading but guided by him. We've been taught to go to him when we need guidance. We've been taught to look to the hills, which comes all our help. And that's a blessing because we know this ain't no secret what God can do. What he done for other people, what he done for others, he sure enough will do for you. His arms 
wide open. He'll pardon you. It just ain't no secret what God can do. So <clears throat> today, you know, you know, the night is one of those nights that we get together and we do testimony. We can't do that tonight. But I got a testimony. I just want to say, you know, this year, this year, you know, just like old song will say, I've been up and I've been down. I've been up and I've been down. But when I get to heaven, there'll be no more ups and downs. I've been beautiful, but I've been scorned. I've been beautiful, but I've been scorned. But when I get to heaven, church, there'll be no more bukes and scorn. So I just say to you tonight, just, you know, as I look in the Bible, when you, the, the people of God's going through things, there's things that they're supposed to do also in this pandemic. It's things that we need to do. We need to wear our masks. We need to learn much as we can about this virus. We can just keep us safe and keep our family safe. So that's what you do. And don't be hard-headed. The CD put out guidelines. Say, wear your mask. Don't congregate in so many, but so many people. Whatever they ask you to do, because they study this thing, let us try to do it. But see, because right now, it's a glimmer, it's a light at the end of the tunnel. And we've seen that, we can see just a little bit of that light. And, but we can't stop now. We got to go ahead and try to get, make it to the end. Because that's, so let's do what we need to do to, to protect our families and to protect our loved ones. And because we want to look back at this. You don't want to look back and say, I didn't do my part. I didn't, something I should have did that, but I, should, I didn't do it. Look back and say, well, I did everything that I thought I could do. Church, I'm on. I don't know how long it took me to do this, but right now I feel like I, I just want to say I love all y'all. I just want to say I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I love the church. I love my thing. Very happy New Year's. I'm just going to sing a 
little bit of this song. But before I do, all of us have been waiting on God to do something for us. We've been asking God to do something for us. For us and for our children, our grandchildren, for our friends and other family members. We've been waiting on God to move in our lives. And right now, I want you within your imagination, imagine yourself standing in the presence of God. Just imagine yourself standing in the presence of God and you can lean on him. And whatever you've been going through, whatever you've been asking God for, at this moment, lay it at the feet of Jesus. I want you to lay it at the feet of Jesus. And when you lay it there, leave it there. Because God's going to pick it up and he's going to take care of it. You are here, moving in our midst, and I worship you, Lord, I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst, and I worship you, Lord, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around, and I worship you, Lord, I worship you. You are here, mending broken hearts, and I worship you, Lord, I worship you. You are here, healing broken hearts, and I worship you, Lord, I worship you. You are here, healing broken hearts, and I worship you, Lord, I worship you. You are here. Turning lives around, and I worship you, Lord, I worship you. Just give God some glory. Hallelujah. share with us right now. into a new year, another opportunity to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People have a lot to say about 2020, but Mount Zion, we can't forget to say God's been with us. He's been with us through it all. We've seen a lot 
-hmm. pass through here, pass mm -hmm. around here, and we have been colored. Mm -hmm. We need to praise him. Mm -hmm. Second Sunday in July without fail. There were times we'd get on the road and it was raining so hard coming up our 20 and I didn't know what we would find when we get here. Sometimes we pull up into the parking space and it was raining and by the time I got up here and Deke sang that the rain had either stopped or had slacked up. <laughs> and there was a concern about tonight because it was raining for, for uh, so much all day. It was supposed to rain all day yesterday, all the way through Sunday, I believe. And they, folks thought it was going to be cold. And because Pastor, a little challenge in the hair category, they thought I was going to come up here and freeze. <laughs> but look at God. If we are faithful, God will be faithful. I know God doesn't pick and choose, but I believe because he knew we were going to be faithful and come on out here, 
he, he went ahead and stopped the rain and, and took the temperature up. And he said, this works for you, Mount Zion. So we give God great glory tonight. Now, Deacon Missouri said we can't do it the traditional way that we've been doing it and having, having testimony. But I'll tell you what, if there's one or two people who just got to say something, God just been so good to you. We, 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 we wipe the mic down, the mic is clean, and, and brother, uh, brother Clark is ready to, get to hand it to you. All you got to do is blink your lights or hit your horn or raise your hand or something. We get it to you. Do we have one? Anybody? This got to help, can't help us, and got to give God some praise tonight. Anybody? I'm patient. We got one over there. Amen. Amen. I want to say hello to everyone. And my testimony is tonight. I'm not here as often as I would like to be, but I was determined to come tonight, especially since the rain stopped. And I have a testimony. The Lord has been good to me. I, I have been through trials this year that I didn't believe I was strong enough to go through. And I don't know the, the number exactly, but it's about 18 family members have died. Mm. And I went to a, a viewing about two weeks ago to my husband, cousin, Melvin Cabistoke from Mechanicsville. He's been here and he's sung here. And he's the latest one that had passed away. And I want everyone to keep our family in prayer, Amen. and I was blessed with a new great-grand, and she had to go in the hospital for a week all by herself because you couldn't visit her. And I wish you would see her today. She had all these tubes in her, and I was real worried, but the Lord has brought her through, and she is beautiful. And we don't know why children come into this world, but I'm thankful for her because she has given me a new spirit. And I have something to look forward to and a lot to live for mm -hmm. with my little family. And I want y'all to keep me and my family in prayer. And I would like to wish everyone a happy new year and I'm happy to see everyone and I'm glad to be here, thank you. God bless you, Sister Catastrophe. Amen. Do we have another? Do we have another? Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. While I was walking back, I would I would think I'd be remiss if I didn't say something. God has been too good to me. He has been too good to me and to us. Out of all that's going on in the world, he has spared my family, my extended family, and my church family. No, no sickness, no illness that I know of. So he's been good. All this week I was thinking about the word grateful. And right now that's all I can say is grateful. so grateful that we found a family. He sent us to, to another family. I'm 
just so grateful. Mm -hmm. Praise God, everybody. Preaching, I'm gonna think you hit your horn and blinking your lights because you're saying amen. I might need to help one or two people. Has God put food on your table this year? Has He healed somebody's body this year? Has he watched over your children and your children's children? <laughs> Has he blessed you to, to get food and bless you to pay your bills and bless you with a job and bless you with a car and bless you with a house and bless you with this and bless you with that and kept you through danger seen and unseen? Then you got a testimony. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. But we just thank God for every testimony given tonight. Whether it's by, by word or by the beeping of your horn. Because all of us know that God has been a real good. Mm -hmm. I just have some words of encouragement tonight. Words of encouragement and then we're going to usher you in the new year. Amen. And I do thank God Mount Zion for your faithfulness throughout this pandemic. Because truth be told, you could have stayed home tonight. And it would have been all right. But you pressed your way on anyhow. When Jesus was going up, God got to the hill. He didn't stop. But he pressed his way on. He did it for me, and he did it for you. So it's not robbery, it's not unreasonable for us to press our way on and give God some praise. Amen? Amen. I want to read a scripture for you tonight from the book of 2 Corinthians. The fourth chapter, verses 8 and 9. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Let me know when you found it. Amen. Second Corinthians 4, verses 8 and 9. Read like this. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Just want to reason with you a little bit. Just encourage you a little bit from, from these words of the Apostle Paul. I'm using the title, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And a subtitle would be, you are made for a comeback. <laughs> you are made for a comeback. Let us pray. Lord God in heaven, we just thank you. We glorify you tonight, Lord God. Thank you for bringing us to the brink of a new year. But even at this point, Lord God, there still is a word from on high. Bless me now and use me to your greater glory, Lord God. Speak, Lord. Your people have gathered together, waiting, anticipating for a, word, for a word from you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. You were made for a comeback. As many have said tonight, 2020 has been a, a harsh year in many respects. We've seen a pandemic that's sickened many of us, and, and yes, that has taken the lives of uh, uh, precious lives of family and friends and neighbors. We lost uh, uh, still even others to other sicknesses or, 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 or diseases. Mm -hmm. People have lost jobs and, and lost uh, careers and lost businesses. We've in, uh, endured this past year a uh, social unrest uh, as black men and women were mercilessly, uh, unmercifully killed uh, by police. We've been separated from, from family and, and, and friends and loved ones. And it's been so crushing that many people have wanted to quit. Many were depressed or overcome with anxiety or even anger. Some felt they, they were going to lose their mind. But can I tell you that we're still here? We're still standing. We're yet alive. Oh, yeah, yes, things got difficult, but, but it seems like every time news got worse, God stepped in just right at the right time and, and gave us a glimmer of hope. Gave us a reason to press on. Gave us a reason to hang on in there. We had to leave our church buildings. But social media and, and Zoom and conference calls and parking lot services have kept us together. People are in need of, of, of food and, and other items and, and churches and, and other organizations and individuals stepped in to provide food and all kind of supplies that they needed. Folks thought that um, Folks thought that the United States was, was doomed uh, uh, for another four years of, of, of crazies on, on, under Donald Trump, but God sent a man named Mike. In the midst of a, a, a deadly pandemic, we learned that God is still God and he's still sitting on the throne. So there were some days when, when people were down and then somebody just came along with a kind word. There was someone who came along sharing masks. There was someone who was calling just checking on them. There was good news from the doctor in the midst of the pandemic. In, in the dark of the pandemic, God was still saving people. God was still calling people in the ministry. God was still opening doors of opportunity. Yes, some people lost jobs, but then some people got new jobs. Some people lost incomes, and some people got, uh, got increases, got promotions. People fell in love, and they got married. Babies were born. I'm telling you that God has still been moving in the midst of the worst pandemic we've ever seen in our lives. And I know some people have complained about how bad 2020 was and, and they've been praying for 2020 to come to an end. But can I tell you that uh, as messy and as disruptive and as destructive and as disappointing as 2020 might have been, it was necessary. 2020 might it might have been one of the worst years of your life, but it's not the only bad year you ever had. How can you say that, Pastor? I remember the year my mama died. I remember the year when my brother died. I remember the year, I remember getting, the year I got di a diagnosis and, and, and they told me to go home and, and retrofit my home to, to, so that I, I could have things that help me get upstairs and help me to get in and out of the bed and help me to open the and close the peanut butter jar. Oh, but when I look back over my life and when I look back over 2020 and I think 
things over all of my good days. I weigh my bad days and I won't. I said I won't. I won't complain. Y'all know, y'all know how that song goes. Sometimes the clouds hang low. And I can hardly see the road. I asked the question, Lord. Lord, why? Why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. So I just say, thank you, Lord. I just say, thank you, Lord. And I won't. Church, I say, I won't. I won't complain. <laughs> if God allowed 2020, it was necessary. It was necessary for our growth. It was necessary for our strength. It was necessary for us to draw closer to God. You see, for many of us, for many of us, 2020 was, was necessary to prepare us for 2021. Instead of complaining about 2020 and, and looking back at the worst of it, we ought to be asking God, Lord, what is going to happen in 2021 that you needed to send me through what I went through in 2020? I don't know about you, but, but I believe my struggles in 2020 just strengthened me for 2021. My setbacks in 2020 just positioned me for a comeback in 2021. My, my failures in 2020 have set me up for success in 2021. And even, even if I have some valleys in 2021, even if some of the bad things happened in 2021, I know that God's got my back. In a little bit, 2020 might be gone, but I'm coming back. I said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Is there anybody like me who, who can say 2020 was heartbreaking at times, uh, but I got to come back in me. 2020 tried to break me, but I'm coming back. 2020 tested my faith, but I'm coming back. And, and, and truth be told that at just about any point in 2020, we all could have paraphrased what Paul is saying here in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. We all could have said we were troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We were perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Yes, we might have been knocked down, but we kept coming back. Coming back with the help of the Lord. Coming back in the strength of the Lord. Coming back following the spirit of the Lord. The Apostle Paul, he often reflected on and referred to the trials and difficulties he, he faced to let us know that it, it was those things that built him up. It was those things that kept him going. It was those things that strengthened him. He knew that he couldn't overcome many of the things that he came through without God. Every time Paul overcame a trial, it was a testimony that had it not been for the Lord who was on his side, he wouldn't have made it. Beloved, whatever pressures come, whatever persecutions come, Whatever challenges come, God will never leave us, nor forsake us. He's right there in the midst of it all. With all that went on in 2020, if you made it, you made it by the grace of God. 
You made it because he kept you. You made it because he brought you. The only, the only reason 2020 didn't break you is because God didn't forsake you. Throughout 2020, there were trials and, and struggles all around us. We were challenged in everything and in every way. Yet we were not strapped down with, with nowhere to turn. We still had room to get on our knees. We still had room and the sense to look to the hills from whence comes our help, knowing that our help, knowing that our help, all our help comes from the Lord. Knowing that our healing comes from the Lord. Knowing that our deliverance comes from the Lord. Knowing that our breakthrough, that it comes from the Lord. Yes, in 2020, we were perplexed, but not in despair. We had no answer for COVID-19, but we have a Lord who's God over COVID-19. We had no answer for some of the racial strife. We were surrounded by sickness, grief, and loss. It was perplexing, yet we didn't despair because we serve a God who can do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. In 2020, we were persecuted, but not forsaken. Yes, we, we might have been looked down on, might have been taken advantage of, might have been tread upon, but we were not forsaken by our God who faithfully fulfilled fulfill his divine promise to be with us even until the end of the earth. Twenty twenty was a year in which some of us were cast down, but not destroyed. Cast down in our own thoughts. We got down on ourselves. We had a pity party on our own. And those of us that were, some of us who didn't have a pity party, we were being attacked by outside forces. Attacked attack through violence, or attacked through violent acts or violent words or, uh, and, and wickedness of men. But we were not destroyed. We rose again. We recovered our strength. <laughs> Isaiah said in, in Isaiah 40 and 31 that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yeah, we might have been knocked down, but we got up because we waited on the Lord. We waited on him and he gave us strength. He built us up. He brought us through. And now we're ready for a comeback. 2020 didn't take my heart away. I'm coming back. I, I don't know what's ahead in, in 2021. But I'm coming back. I'm prepared for, for new conflicts. I'm prepared for new difficulties. I'm prepared for new tests. Or I might be weary of 2020, but I'm not worn out. I might have been hurt by many things that happened in 2020, but I'm not hobbled. I'm not done yet because God is not through. He's not through with me. might have gotten under my skin but it did not kill me it, it didn't break me and so I'm coming back I'm coming back stronger I'm coming back better I'm coming back wiser if you are a saint of God you ought to stand on your faith and declare that yes 2020 might have rocked me 
but I'm coming back in 2021. I lost a family member, but I'm coming back. I lost my job, but I'm coming back. I lost my house, but I'm coming back. I lost my peace, but I'm coming back. I lost my joy, but I'm coming back. I almost lost my mind, but I'm coming back. I almost gave up, but I'm coming back. And I'm coming back in power. I'm coming back in strength. I'm coming back in love. I'm coming back in victory. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back because God has given us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm coming back because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm coming back because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm coming back because nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I'm coming back. I'm coming back because I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I'm coming back because I'm an overcomer. I'm coming back because I'm, I'm, I'm one of the king's kids, a member of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I'm coming back because the Bible says that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed and not cursed. I'm well and not sick. I'm a success and not a failure. I said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Most of all, because my Savior came back. They lied on him, but he came back. They took him through a kangaroo court, but he came back. They pierced him in his side, but he came back. They put a, a crown of thorns in his head, but he came back. They hung him high and stressed him wide, but he came back. They laid him in a tomb, but he came back. He was there for three days, but he came back. I'm coming back because Jesus came back. I'm coming back in resurrection power. I'm coming back in getting up power. I'm coming back in the authority and dominion of my Savior. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Won't you come back with me? Won't you make to take this road with me? Let's take 2021 by storm. We're going to go in 2021, not leading on our own power, not leading on our own might, but leading on the spirit, on the spirit of the true, the true and living God. I'm coming back, church. I'm coming back. I said, I'm coming back. Twenty twenty has come and is soon to be gone. But God has kept us here. Indeed, we are mourned our family who fell to this disease of COVID-19, mm -hmm. who fell to other maladies. Mm -hmm. But we have to still look in the mirror and have a little talk with Jesus and say, Lord, why did you keep me here? What is it in 2021 that you have for me? What is it in 2021 are you calling on me to do? What is it in 2021 I'm to lay hold of? What is it in 2021 I'm, I'm supposed to lead on? What is it in 2021 that I'm supposed to do for somebody else? What is it, Lord, am I to do for you in 2021? We're not about to cross over by happenstance. God has kept us. God is a God of purpose. Nobody is sneaking into 2021. God knows everybody who's going to cross the threshold. And he has something for us to do. So if you're coming back, come back on purpose. Come back with a destiny in mind. 
Come back knowing that God has got something for you. He has a plan for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to get ready to pray. I need, a, I need a short song, just a short song before we pray. Just a short song. We got a short song for before we pray. Something short. Something short before we pray. Something take us. 2020 to 2021. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Said I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting upon the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Let's fix our minds on Jesus. Let's fix our mind on the rock. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We glorify you. We magnify your holy and your righteous name. We give you great glory, Lord God. We lift you up, Lord. Thank you for being our God, the God who blesses us. Thank you for being El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough, more than COVID-19, more than our sicknesses, more than our diseases, more than our lack, more than our challenges, more than our enemies. Thank you for being a God who's able to deliver us no matter the situation or the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you for allowing us to gather ourselves together this evening, yes. that we might give you praise, that we might raise up testimonies, that we might sing songs of Zion all unto you, Lord God, in thanksgiving for how you brought us through 365 days, Lord God, 365 days, some of which had much hardship, some of which had heartbreak, some of which we saw loved ones pass on, some of which, Lord God, we saw, Lord God, people walk away from us, some of which, Lord God, we saw other people hurting, people sick, people hungry, people without jobs, but we also saw you lift people up. We also saw you bless people. We also saw you save people. We also saw you deliver people. We also saw you bless people with jobs. We also saw you bless people with husbands and wives. We also saw you to bring new, uh, uh, your, your, your children into the world, Lord God. So we thank you for taking us through 2020, through danger seen and unseen. But Lord, we also thanking you for bringing us to the precipice of 2021. Thank you for not just being a God of our past, or the God of our present, but being the God of our future. The God who says, I know the thoughts that I think of you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Oh, we're thanking that we got a future. We're thanking we deserve a God who holds tomorrow in his hands. We're thanking that we serve a God who's already stepped 
into 2021 a God who's going ahead of us a God who's making a way for us bless us Lord God bless our children and our children's children bless our spouses Lord God bless our bless our, our family and our friends bless the Mount Zion Baptist Church bind us together in love and in unity prepare us Lord for ministry in 2021 Lord God prepare us to meet the need of the least the lost the left out and the lonely Lord Lord we just thank you thank you Lord for preserving us now Lord God use us in 2021 elevate us in 2021 promote us in 2021 use our hands Lord God in ministry use our lips in ministry use our feet in ministry use our mind in ministry use our money in ministry use us to your users up Lord God and Lord we just want to thank you for every blessing thank you for every healing thank you for every opportunity thank you Lord God Father, we just thanking you for a brand new year thanking you for another opportunity thanking you for another chance thanking you Lord God we come leaning on your everlasting arms we come Lord God with holy hands lifted up without wrath and without doubt we come Lord God blessing your name we come Lord God giving you glory we want to enter 2021 with praise on our lips thanksgiving on our heart a sweet melody a sweet melody for you Lord God we glorify you we magnify you we bless your name we lift you up we glorify you Lord God hallelujah thank God thank God thank God thank God for a brand new year thank God for 2021 it's in Jesus name that name that's above every name that we do pray thank you Lord God saints of God saints of God let me be the first to say happy new year happy new year happy new year happy new year I don't know what 2020 did to you, but it can't do it no more. 2021 is now our new year. Happy New Year, beloved. Mm -hmm.